Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel and another paper crafting video tutorial. Today we're going to create some autumn pumpkin cards and matching little gift bags stamped on muslin. So if you were here last year, I created some little stamped and stenciled gift bags and I am going to include that video right up here. Um, so you can click that link if you're interested as well as there'll be a link down in the description if you'd like to go back and revisit that and I thought that this stamp set the brand new farm fresh pumpkins from the August release at paper tray would lend itself perfectly to some little fall themed gift bags first we are going to start with the cards and today we are going to use the farm fresh pumpkins stamp set this is a darling stamp set with coordinating dies that creates a truck filled with pumpkins, gourds, and then all of the pieces and components to completely finish this truck. I am using today um, mostly, if not all, Hero Arts inks to do my stamping. I knew that Hero Arts had the particular color of pumpkins, number one, because I actually, even though the video is shown with the cards first and the bag second, I stamped the bags first and the cards second. Um, and so I knew I liked those colors for the pumpkins. I wanted to replicate that. And then I knew that Hero Arts had some blue inks that I was particularly thinking looked really good with the oranges and rusts and yellows of my pumpkins. So that was kind of my thought process there behind inks. Grab your favorite ink colors. You can obviously stamp in any colors, combinations that you want to. I kind of kept mine to a very traditional type of color scheme, but I love that pop of blue for the truck. Those colors are going to be mist and periwinkle. I do have links to all of the inks I used down in the description below for your convenience to make that easy. There are tons of parts and pieces to these trucks. And because I'm doing two cards at once, you'll notice I have a half sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock that I am simply flipping flipping back and forth so I can stamp multiples. Now, if you wanted to do even more than two, if you had multiple pieces of paper, you could simply assembly line style stamp this, and I would recommend that. That is how I was able to get as many of these truck pieces and components as I did. It is very detailed as are most paper tray ink layering stamp sets, but I think that's where the magic is, at least for me. If you are loving, if, and if you do love all of those layers, you love multiple colored images without the coloring, these stamp sets are absolutely for you. And um, I know I'll probably get asked how long it took me to create this. The cards took, I want to say two and a half hours from start to finish. I, I believe it was two and a half, between two and a half to three hours. That's mostly because it is a lot of stamping. I did have to, I had to trim my dies apart. The next time I would make this, it's not going to be quite as long because I don't have to snip all of my dies apart. Um, trying to think what else. So little things like that are going to make it a little bit longer. I did have a couple of little interruptions during that time. So all of those things do extend or make things take a tiny bit longer than they might normally. But I would say two and a half to three hours because of all of the pieces, because of all of the stamping. For the most part, I did use the Misty. I opted not to use the Misty for stems. Now I do, when I get to stamping all the pumpkins, we will talk about this in a little bit more detail. And then I do wanna talk when we get to stamping the muslin bags, I will talk about my thought process there and how I kind of switched from what I was doing. Um, I am just stamping all of the pieces. I actually stamped two of the tailgate of the truck and I don't need that second one because I opted to stamp one with the tailgate up and then you stamp the kind of farm fresh pumpkins 
text on the tailgate and fill the bed of the truck with your pumpkins and hay and all of that good stuff. For the second one, I wanted it to be with the tailgate open so I could utilize that plaid blanket. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? The plaid blanket that we are going to lay in the truck and then fill the truck with hay bales and things like that. Then I also realize now, as I'm filming this, literally how I couldn't see this when I photographed it, I stamped the Farm Fresh Pumpkins on the tailgate twice, and the second one was much better, like much evenly spaced. I somehow ended up using the one that wasn't. Is it a big deal? No, it's not, but I don't know how that even happened, because I even adjusted it. <laughs> oh well. Uh, you know what? It's just paper. That's what I always tell myself. So this is a fantastic release. I do want to make mention of that in my video today. This is the first of two videos that are going to be somewhat similar, at least as far as um, content. The difference being one is a fall themed content card, this one, and the other is going to be Halloween. I have mentioned this many times on social media that fall is my absolute favorite season. I love everything about fall and Halloween. I love the colors. I love the decorations. Everything about it. Uh, just a huge fall girl. We're actually a fall family. Uh, entire family kind of loves the whole season. My daughter and I especially, I would say. But um, so I'm drawn to all of this kind of stuff. And I had ideas, but I didn't want to try to cram it all into one video. So this will be the first of two videos. Make sure you check out my channel for the other video because it will be more Halloween themed. I also wanted to separate it because I know not everyone loves Halloween. And that way, if Halloween is not your jam, that's totally fine. But you can skip that video if you are not interested in it. Uh, so I did want to mention that and I will make sure there are links to both of those down in the description below as well. So my, my other tip when working with paper tray ink layering stamp sets, lots and lots of layers. You can see I am working through a ton of layers here. Once I, I always try to start with the largest image, in this case the truck, but once I started working on that, these sets generally are two pieces. Um, I don't even know if that's the right term, but there's two cling sheets. So you get, it's divided into two, um, two separate pieces that have, you know, all of your images. Because of that, and a lot of the images, you know, you have to go back and forth between, basically, I kind of consider it two sets, even though it's all one. Well, once I get enough images from one stamped, I start to um, try to stamp everything from one of the halves of the set. Does that make sense? I hope. And the reason I do that is because I because I don't want to miss any of the images. And I do want to mention here, I'm stamping the license plate. That poor license plate had many, many uh, different... <laughs> different color combinations. I don't stick with this one. Um, that one wouldn't have been too bad. I like the what I finally settled on the best, but I did want to mention that. So I try to use up all of the, Im use up, I try to stamp all of the images from one half of the set. That way it kind of helps me ensure that I'm not missing anything. Some of these images are really teeny tiny. So as I'm working through, it just naturally ended up being that I am going to work through the half of the set that has the truck um, and all of the components. Also included in this half of the set, the sunflower and the license plate, but not all of the license plate comes from here. Half of the license plate, the little I, I mean, it's amazing to me, the detail, but the little detail of where the screws go in your license plate is a separate stamp and that is on the other side. Now there are some components for the truck that are on the other half of the set. I'm just kind of talking you through my thought process and how I ensure that I'm not missing things. 
The only thing I end up needing from this half of the sheet once I'm done stamping all of these components is the stem for that big kind of spread out flat pumpkin. He's my favorite. I love that one. Um, but that's okay. I know that as I get to the end of stamping this. The leaves for the sunflower here, which I think that in itself is an awesome little image that can be used on so many things. I am getting multiples of that, two per flower, so I needed to stamp it four times. I decided instead of using my Misty, you're gonna see this quite a bit as I work my way into some of the smaller layering images, I'm going to use an acrylic block. Again, I know I haven't mentioned all of the ink colors I'm using. They are all linked down in the description below. Um, hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. As I get to the pumpkins, I will tell you the pumpkin colors because I'm going to go back and forth and you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Uh, I did forget to do the uh, side view mirrors, so I'm doing those right now. Those are still from this half of the sheet. Once I have this side of the sheet, we are ready to move on to the pumpkins. What is left on the other half of this set, because we've already done the tailgate, are our pumpkins, gourd, and hay. Hay bale, and then the individual hay images. And I did end up using basically an entire sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock for this project because I am doing two separate cards and there's so many different images and I wanna make sure that I can die cut all of them. Okay, so I notice I'm out of frame a little bit here. I think I'm stamping my license plate in the color combination I ended up liking. You'll see that in the end. I'm sorry I am so far down below. Okay, pumpkins. My big, big pumpkin, this big guy. He is stamped with the pumpkin color of Hero Arts Ink. Um, kind of the perfect name for this ink color. There you can see my happy fall um, license plate. Next up, we are going to stamp this stem. This is going to be Cup of Joe. It's Cup of Joe for the cards. I am going to use a different brown ink for the bags. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. I did go ahead and stamp this one. He's kind of easy to line up before die cutting. I am not going to stamp the other pumpkins and gourds stems yet. Now the layering piece for this big kind of big flat pumpkin, that's what I'm gonna call him, is Cup of Joe. So the colors, pumpkin and Cup of Joe for that pumpkin. We have our little small guy, and then we have what I'm gonna call our, our carving pumpkin. The more traditional pumpkin shape that you would use for jack-o'-lanterns is going to be the third. So for the little guy, he is stamped in the fawn color of ink. And we're going to do that layer first. We're going to do our big Jack, I'm going to call him the Jack pumpkin. He is in sand. And then we're going to flip that around and we are going to stamp those again. Again, I need two sets for two cards. I think I do stamp the stem for the little guy. It's just this big guy and the gourd that I go ahead and hold off on. Now the layering pieces for these two pumpkins. My little guy, that is going to be the pumpkin color over fawn. The jack pumpkin, that is caramel over sand. That is the colors used for the layering. Again, all Hero Arts colors. As these, these are dye inks, as they dry and, as, and absorb into the cardstock, any kind of blotchiness is going to smooth out and the colors will fade just a little bit and soften and it just leaves you with the perfect look. Stems for all pumpkins will be Cup of Joe, but again, leaving off the stems for Jack and the gourd because 
I was afraid I wouldn't get it lined up correctly and then it would die cut funny. So we're going to die cut those first and I will stamp those here at the end after they've been die cut. Spicy Mustard. I love the name of this and I love this yellow color. It is a spicy mustard. That is the color for the hay bales. The layering piece for the hay bales is going to be fawn and it actually works perfectly. Love that. I'm going to stamp multiples of the little straw here in spicy mustard. I want to be able to tuck two of these into each card. So we're going to need multiples of those. Wouldn't this also make a fantastic gift tag? I briefly considered making one. I may still do that. Um, probably wouldn't film a video since it'd be very, the very much the same. But I think a big, almost a two size gift tag. I know Mama Elephant has one of my favorite gift tag sets uh, as far as that uh, shape goes, I think would be perfect for this. A lot of different, different uh, size tags would actually work. Um, for our final pumpkin or gourd image, this is spicy mustard. And then we're going to do caramel over the top for the layering and the detail. So you'll notice there's a lot of mix and match amongst the colors, but I still end up with four very distinct colors of pumpkins. That was my goal here was to make sure that no two were exactly the same. Now you could stamp them all exactly the same if you want to. I think that would be fun too, but I my goal here was to stamp them all just a tiny bit different. Okay, we have all of our images. We are gonna die cut them all. With the magic of video, I have die cut and now I am taking my stems and an acrylic block and the Cup of Joe ink and we are stamping all of those stems. Once we have that done, we are finished with the Farm Fresh Pumpkins stamp set. It is time to create some amazing backgrounds for our cards. And as I was looking at my finished images and what I had, I decided I really wanted to um, create that fall vibe and feel for the background of my card, but I think it will be a tiny bit too busy to be right up next to the truck hope that makes sense. So we're going to stencil four and a quarter by five and a half inch backgrounds of smooth white cardstock using sand and caramel inks from Hero Arts using the new water color plaid stencils and then spritzing with fallen acorn distress mica stain. So I know I that one I didn't do it on camera so I'm going to show it again. It's a four piece stencil set. Two horizontal stencils, two vertical stencils, and we are going to stencil all the stripes going one direction in one color, I think. No. So there's going to be a stripe, vertical and horizontal, in each colorway. So sand is going first. We're going to do the, our horizontal stripes. And you guys, imagine this in any color combination. Imagine a blue color combination. Imagine a red and green for Christmas. This is a great stencil set. Highly, highly recommend picking this stencil set up if you like the kind of watercolor-ish looking effect absolutely incredible stencils. I do want to mention something really quick. Hero Arts inks stain stencils really badly. If you try to get the ink off with water and soap and water, it often doesn't work great. My best tip is to take rubbing alcohol and it's going to take that ink right off of the stencil. So I did want to mention that. I keep rubbing alcohol in a spray and I actually just spritzed it um, over my backgrounds and rubbed it all off. This is caramel and we're using the final two stencils and going back the other direction to finish our plaid. Doesn't this just look like the yummiest plaid blanket? Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this. And again, as those inks dry, absorb into the cardstock, it's gonna smooth out and be beautiful. 
And then we will spritz this background with the Distress Mica Stain in the color Fallen Acorn as well. If you don't want it messy like that, you can completely eliminate that step. I've also die cut my favorite, favorite layering uh, background design from Paper Tray Ink. It is the Love to Layer Delightful Brackets. This is the large one from there. You can see it die cuts the shape, but it also die cuts that decorative edge. I absolutely love it. I die cut this from some Desert Storm craft co colored cardstock, and then we are assembling the truck. Now, I did speed up this process both trucks assembly is in the video, but I sped it up because it is it is time consuming. This was one of the most time consuming parts of this whole project was simply the assembly. I divided out all of my images. I did not put glue in the top part of my tailgate. I only ran a bead of glue along the bottom when I adhered it. That way I could easily tuck all of my different components right into the bed of my truck. You can see I'm using my tweezers. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to start gluing things down, starting with the back and working my way forward. The bed of the truck has two pieces of straw, four pumpkins, and that is it. That is enough. It fills it all up completely. So cute. Now, I don't know what I was thinking. I started to glue my sunflower down because I thought, wouldn't that be cute? And it is cute. That'd be super cute. But I did stamp my license plate. <laughs> so um, because that actually gets covered with the blanket and it wasn't quite dried down yet, I just swapped it out for the one, the other one because I can use the one that kind of has the gluey mess on it for the other card. I've got my license plate that says hello fall and we're just going to tuck our sunflower next to it. Now there's plenty of space up above and down below to add a sentiment. So I should have stamped it first but I forgot so I popped it up with foam adhesive, the delightful uh, bracket on top of my background and I am using a previously released sentiment. This is the Larger Than Life Fall Sentiments, and it reads, Wishing You All the Bountiful Blessings of Fall. Love it. Worked out perfect. We're going to add a little Trinity Stamps Coffee Bean Heart down below. There's my heart for all of my friends who know that I love to use those on my cards. And let's go ahead and assemble the second card design. Again, all the assembly is going to be pretty much the same, except for we're not going to use the tailgate. And we're going to use a hay bale. But really, all the rest of the images are the same. I guess no license plate either. So this one, no tailgate, no license plate, but we have the addition of the hay bale and the blanket. I do think this truck would be cute popped up with foam adhesive. It would take a little bit of work just to, maybe not as much as I originally thought. You would need small foam squares under the wheels, bigger foam pieces underneath the truck, and fo small foam squares underneath the side view mirrors. But I think the rest of it would all just be glued directly to the truck. So that's a fun idea as well. If you would like to pop up the truck instead of the background layering piece, I think that would be a great idea. Just gonna add in all of these little parts and pieces. I just can't get over that little plaid blanket. I think it's the cutest thing. I will use some acrylic blocks to help hold everything down nice and flat while my glue dries. We'll add our sunflower in. This time I am using the Larger th Than Life Fall Sentiments again, but we're going to stamp Fall Greetings. I have a little less room on this one. Uh, the blanket hangs down in some of that space, but there's still plenty of room to add a little greeting. You can also stamp greetings inside your card if you don't want to add anything on the outside. I am going to stamp this one though prior to placing it on my card. <laughs> okay, once we have that done and those were stamped with Cup of Joe ink, we'll pop this background up as well. 
So let's talk about the little muslin bags. I know I've gotten and I still get lots of questions on the ones I did last year. I will say that the little bags I used in last year's video were purchased at Michael's craft store. I purchased these from Amazon and I do have a link down in the description below. They are the three by four size. I will tell you quality control, not so much. If you want, if you're worried about your ink, Bleeding through, I recommend cutting a piece of cardstock that you put back be or inside the bag, and that will kind of ensure that the color won't bleed through. So I started by thinking, let's just stamp this um, using the Misty, and I ha I did that in the past, and it worked pretty good. Uh, the first one I would recommend don't double stamp. So that first bag I made, I had to pitch because I stamped it, I didn't get a good impression, and um it didn't look good that, that that's all there is to it it kind of gave you a shadow effect I had to throw it away these are fairly inexpensive if you buy them I think I bought them a hundred at a time on Amazon and again there is the link below so I think out of the I did stamp a hundred of these you guys <laughs> uh, I'm using them as a gift but out of the hundred the first hundred, because I needed more than a hundred actually, I only had two that I messed up. For me, that was pretty good odds. Now, I used the Misty at first. I used it for the pumpkins and quickly I realized, holy smokes, this is gonna take forever. It does work great. If you have 10 of these to make, this probably wouldn't be the worst thing, but see how I used my acrylic block for the stem? As I worked through this, as I started stamping, I thought, you know what, this is stupid. This is going to take me forever to line up all of my stamps or I'm gonna to have to get multiple Misties out because I have so many of these bags to stamp. So I used acrylic blocks and you guys, so much easier. And I ended up, I know I'm doing all of this one, but I ended up doing this assembly line style and it worked amazing, amazing. Pumpkins, the color combinations are going to be exactly what you saw on the first one. I did stamp the stripes on that one pumpkin wrong. I just rolled with it. That's okay. They're upside down on that one. Again, it's okay. Color combinations left to right. Jack has the colors sand and caramel. Uh, my flat pumpkin, that's pumpkin. And this time it's the archival ink. Um, we're using the Tim Holtz archival ink in the color ground espresso. That is the color for the text as well. Um, and then the little mini pumpkin is fawn and pumpkin. So here is how it actually looked assembly line. I did cut out quite a bit of this. You can see my huge stack hour wise, two hours to stamp to, I think it took two, an hour and a half to two hours to stamp a hundred bags. And literally, I did not get hung up on perfection. And I think that actually is a good thing. It looks amazing. The, every bag looks amazing, even if it's maybe slightly off or not per, quote unquote perfect. This is a great project. So let's say you wanna make some, you, you probably don't have this many to stamp, maybe you do, but if you want to make little treat bags for trick-or-treaters or special trick-or-treaters, nieces, nephews. Uh, maybe you wanna make 20, 25 of these for kids in a classroom as little class treats or you have preschool treats, kindergarten treats, I don't know, whatever the case may be. I even think older like teen girls would, you could make some of these really fun for a party and you will see this in my Halloween video coming soon that um, you could do Halloween themed ones, but if you're doing a fall party, my daughter's birthday, it was, is in the fall. And these would be, have been great little treat bags when she was a kiddo. She would have loved these. You could slide, you know, little candies in here and maybe just a little treat or little necklaces if girls get older. There are so many ways to do these little gift bags and I just hope it inspires you to maybe think outside the box a little bit with your paper crafting supplies. Uh, it is time consuming to do this many. I will say I'm probably a little, you guys know, extra, uh, but very fun. Now, what is inside of these? Um, 
I don't really want to mention yet. I will do a video about this. I am taking these to a cross stitch retreat. And so I put some little finishing supplies in each of these for everyone to just to pass out to give a little something to everyone. Very inexpensive. Did this on a budget. But these little bags so much cuter with a decorative element. Now would I have I will I'll be honest, I knew that it was going to be a lot of work to stamp multiple pumpkins, but I thought, oh, if I just do one pumpkin, that would be great. And maybe if the pumpkin was bigger, it would have been, but I looked at it with just one pumpkin and I couldn't leave it. That's where the extra in me comes out. And so I went ahead and did, I did another pumpkin and I thought, well, if I'd shifted the pumpkin over, two would have maybe been okay. But I like threes. I like odd numbers. So I went with the three. And that is it for kind of how these went together. I am, I, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, I ended up not using the insert. I don't, I didn't need it. My inks did not bleed through. They probably weren't super juicy. If your inks are brand new, re-inked, re, you've used re-inkers or whatever, you may want to put something inside the bags that would definitely take a little more time. But this was was Nicole's super speedy way of, I, I say super speedy, what, two, three hours <laughs> of creating my own custom bags. Think about stamp sets you have on hand, or, and maybe you don't have fall bags that you wanna make. Maybe you wanna make start making some little Christmas goodie bags now. How cute would it be to take some of your favorite Christmas sets, layering stamp sets, and create some little baggies? These come in lots of different sizes. These are the three by four sizes. Uh, quality control, not really there with these bags from Michaels or Amazon I found because some of them are not the same size. If they are wrinkled, I highly recommend ironing them. I, I have a little craft iron. I ironed several of the bags, not all of them. I would say less than 10 that I ended up ironing because they had a horrible wrinkle in them that, and they wouldn't have stamped nice. And my whole goal was to get them to stamp correctly and you know, as, as perfect, quote unquote perfect as possible. So you'll, there's some fading in some of these. Oh, and I also, because I could not layer the pumpkins with die cuts, right? I purposely picked my darkest color pumpkin for the foreground. Remember, I did this project before the cards. And so I did my my pumpkin colored pumpkin and then I did the fawn, which is kind of, it blends in and it doesn't give a harsh line through the orange pumpkin. Same with the sand color pumpkin. It doesn't give a harsh line through the orange pumpkin. So I'm able to layer them so it looks like this trio of pumpkins along the bottom and it just worked great. I'll tell you what, when I was at this point, I was so happy because I could see the end in sight. We're doing the layering of the final pumpkin, adding our stems. I think I did this at all at once. So this was four stamped pieces. <laughs> once I got here, I was like, last pumpkin, let's just do both the stems. A funny story is I thought I had them all and I turned around and I had put a whole stack of bags back behind me. So I'd probably only done like two thirds <laughs> of the bags. And so I had to end up doing the rest. But anyhow, I hope this has inspired you. I hope it encourages you to think outside the box and maybe create some fun things that are not cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these autumn pumpkin cards and gift bags using August 2023 release products from Paper Tray Inc. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today for another paper crafting tutorial. I love being able to share with this incredible community of crafters. I want to give a huge shout out and special thank you to my amazing Patreon members. If you're interested in joining Patreon, please click the link in the description underneath the video here on YouTube. Patreon is a private community where you can support more of what I do. There is exclusive content, information, and behind the scenes content. Top tier members will receive a handmade birthday card during your birthday month, access to DStash, 
and monthly exclusive lives, plus so much more. We would love to have you join our growing community. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when there is a new video or I go live. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you again next time.